Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Berlis and let's talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without cost you anything extra. And all the links, they'll be in the description together with some type steps so you can jump to the point of your preference. And this episode, we start with What Lies Beneath the Darkness by Cesar Capco a creator from RPG Latem, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. The game is a submission to Push Jam, created by Cesar Capco himself, as well as mentioned in a previous episode, the jam is still going on, and you can still submit to it and check all the games that were from on that. In What Lies Beneath the Darkness, you play as a horror employed by a faction to expand their dominance over the city. Through all it all, you are also struggling and fighting to balance your human and supernatural nature inside yourself. This game about intrigue and struggle can be played solo or in group and requires very to no prep at all, so it can literally be called zero prep. And the idea of playing as a horror and having all this struggle inside yourself of what is your human part, what is your supernatural part and which one will take the better of you. It's, it's really interesting for me, at least. Also released this week is Loot the Rooms and anti Sisyphus of One's Own. And what is it actually? Well, just a bunch of words and images scavenged from various sources and put together in a four pages PDF. And what exactly is an anti Sisyphus? Well, uh, how am I supposed to know, right? The more important thing is if it's useful or uh, and if it's good and well, no. But go figure it out yourself, check it out and decide for yourself actually. This week we also had Secondhand Love by Darker Larper. It is a game of four to six players about winning love on the high seas. This heck of I want your Bite by Rudiki is designed to be played as a one-shot, but can be modified for longer games as well. One of the players takes the role of the captain, and the other ones are in place of competing against each other for the chance of the captain's bo uh, love. The chance of captain's love. They will have a series of challenges trying to prove themselves for the captain, and it's a really interesting kind of idea, and it can lead to uh, very different situations. You should check it out as well. And you have still close to two weeks to get the Caltrop Core Gem Bundle. It puts together 26 games that were released as part of either the first or the second Caltrop Gem. The Caltrop Core system is an easy hackable system that we already mentioned here. And if you were unaware of it, you should check it out. It was featured on Dicebreaker as well as one of the systems to hack. It's really interesting, easy to hack, and a good way to try and create your own first game. At least in my opinion, it seems a good way to start. Now to gems. We are featuring plenty of them today. First one is Who Shift Jam 2022, which Secondhand Love was submitted to, okay? It is a gem celebrating one year of Hootopia, and the idea is for you to hack games from Hootopia creators. It provides a comprehensive set of rules that are really sensible ones, like respecting attribution, licenses, and that all the games need to be standalone so that it can be played by themselves, so that you do not need the original one to play them as well, and so on. You have up until July 31st to submit your games, so a bit longer than two months still, and plenty of games that you have to choose from for the one that you want to hack. It's all linked in the gem page, so you should check it out. And it has already some submissions, so we should check the submissions as well and see if something strikes your fancy. Another gem that goes on for a bit longer than two months now is which D&D gem? This gem, hosted by Mark Shepard and Indy Zini, proposes that you create a game that can be abbreviated to D&D. And your game has to be so good and so popular that someday people will need to ask for clarification whenever someone mentions D&D so that they know which of the games they are talking about. If they are talking about your system or some other maybe popular system that can be related to that as well. 
okay? The rules are simple and I already mentioned most of them, but head to the gem page to get the full requirements and already check for some of the entries. The, some of them are really interesting. And we have two gems starting on June 1st. The first one being the OSR June Gem hosted by Monkey Spa Games. It is for you to create an OSR title during the month of June. It can be a retro clone, it can be a module, it can be a bestiary, it can be whatever you think about uh, creating about OSR. It also goes on details explaining what is OSR, uh, if you are not yet familiar with it, and what will be considered as OSR for the gem itself. Other rules are also explained on the gem page together with some useful resources. Uh, some of them are really interesting even if you are not trying to submit something for the gem itself, but even if you want to know more about the OSR and what it is, what it's not, and all of different ways that they can be interpreted as well, it's they are interesting resources. At least uh, I think that they can be a good read as well. The other one is the Breathless Gem hosted by Fari RPGs. This gem proposes that you use the Breathless SRD Breathless being uh, a game of survival horror with some dreading mechanics and each skill check puts you closer to the dangerous situations or an even more dangerous situation. The rules are simple and it also provides some useful resources on the gem page. The most important one being the SRD itself, but also the license and as well some templates that you can use for creating your games more easily. And it's really interesting because it's in different formats. so. It can help someone that are trying to create their first game, okay? On articles and threads, this time around I want to mention this nice article by Lucas Rolim discussing how some behaviors can make it harder for you or some players to enjoy the dungeon crawl experience due to some constant fear of your character dying. It's a short read, but it brings some interesting points and more of it, it's, it brings some food for thought so that when you play games, how you can behave and you, you don't need to agree with all of it. It's just some ideas that you can keep on your mind and think of uh, on them when you are experiencing a next game, okay? For this week, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like them video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. Let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, what you are disliking about it. I will read all of them and I will also respond if you have anything to contribute as well. And I, you can pay me a coffee on coffee. you can buy my games on itch.io and I see you all in my next video. So, see ya!